Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, everyone. My name is Rabbi Shaky Dome, and today I'm going to be reading in its season the the book of Ezekiel from chapter 22. And I have on my judge's cloak today because this is what I'm asked to do. From verse number one. The word of prophecy from before Yah was with me saying, and you, son of Adam, in this case, the son of Adam is me. Would you judge? Would you admonish the city in the midst of which one has shed innocent blood, then declare all of her abominable deeds. I'm going to say yes to that. And say, thus says Yah Allah, a city in the midst of which one has shed innocent blood, the time has come for her to be crushed. Together with those who worship idols within her, thereby defiling her. You have become guilty by the sin of innocent blood which you have shed, and you have become defiled by your worship of idols. Now the day is near for you to be crushed, and the time has come for evil to befall you. Therefore I have made you a reproach to the nations, a mockery to all countries. Those who are near and those who are far from you shall mock you who are ill-famed, whose noisy crowds are many. Now, you have been charged guilty for the crime of innocent blood. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. My people, the house of Israel, you shall not be murderers. You shall not be companions or partakers with murderers. In the congregation of Israel, there shall not be seen a murderous people. Neither shall your sons rise up after you and teach each one another to take part with murderers. For on account of the guilt of murder, the sword cometh forth upon the world. You have been charged and found guilty of idolatry. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. The second word which came forth from the mouth of the Holy One, whose name be blessed, was like storms and lightnings and flames of fire. A burning light was on his right hand and on his left and was born through the air of the heavens, returned and was made manifest unto the camp of Israel. It returned and was engraven on the tables of the covenant and was turned in them from side to side. Then he called and said, House of Israel, my people, thou shalt have no other God beside me. You shall not make to yourself image or figure or any similitude of what is in the heavens above or on the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, worship before them, for I am Yah, your Allah, am a jealous God and an avenger, punishing with vengeance, recording the guilt of the wicked fathers upon the rebellious children unto the third and unto the fourth generation of them who hate me, but keeping mercy and goodness for thousands of generations of the righteous who love me and who keep my commandments and my laws.
This is the law and the judgment of the Most High has given unto this generation in this day and time and the charge given unto the children of Israel. As you are commanded to obey, so shall you do. Continuing on with the Most High's verdict. Behold, the princes of Israel in you, each has used his power in order to shed innocent blood. Father and mother, they have dishonored within you. The proselyte, they have treated with oppression in your midst. Orphans and widows, they have wronged in you. Toward my sacred things, you have acted contemptuously. You have profaned my Sabbaths. There were within you men who informed on others in order to shed innocent blood. And on the mountains, they worshiped idols within you. A conspiracy of transgression have they made in your midst. The father's nakedness they have uncovered in you. A woman during her period they have violated in you. A man commits abomination with his neighbor's wife and another man defiles his daughter-in-law in the conspiracy of transgression. And in you still, another man violates his sister, his father's daughter. Within you, they have taken bribes in order to shed innocent blood. You have taken usury and interest and made profit for your friend by oppression. But the worship of me you have abandoned, says Yah Allah. Behold, I am bringing my punishment upon you for the sins of monetary oppression, which you have committed, and for the innocent blood which has been shed in your midst. Can your heart remain strong? And can your hands remain firm for the days in the future that I will deal with you? I, Yah, have decreed it by my memory, and I will fulfill it. I will exile you among the nations and disperse you in the countries and I will remove your filthiness from you. Now I want to make this very clear. While we have been exiled and we have been dispersed, the time of the removal of the filthiness from Israel has come. Then I shall be sanctified through you before the eyes of the nations, and you shall know that I am Yah, Allah. The word of prophecy from before Yah was with me, saying, Son of Adam, the house of Israel has become dross before me. All of them are like copper, tin, iron, and lead mixed in a crucible. They have become silver dross. For those of you who don't know what a crucible is, a crucible is an iron or forge, a fire forge, to purify metals. And silver dross is raw silver, which has been unrefined. Therefore, thus says Allah, because you have all become dross, behold, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. Like the gathering together of silver, copper, iron, lead, and tin into the midst of a crucible for the fire to overpower it in order to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my wrath and I shall finish you and destroy you. And I will gather you and overpower you with the fire of punishment and you will melt away in the midst of it. As silver is melted inside of a crucible, so shall you be melted in the midst of it. And you shall know that I, Yah, have poured out my wrath upon you. The word of prophecy was before Yah was with me, saying, Son of Adam, say to her, you are the land of Israel, a land that is not cleansed. Hmm. So, I want to be clear about this prophecy so that you have 
a clear understanding. When the Most High is talking about Jerusalem and the land, he's talking to you, the people, in this instance. He says clearly, say to her, you are the land of Israel, a land that is not cleansed. And no good deed has been performed in her to protect her in the day of curse. Her fellow traveling teachers in the midst of her are like lions roaring for the kill. They have slain human beings. They have appropriated wealth and precious things. They have increased her widows in her midst. Her priests misinterpret my Torah and desecrate my holy things. They have not made no distinction between the sacred and the non-sacred. And they have not made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have closed their eyes to my Shabbat so that my will is profaned among them. Her princes in the midst of her are like wolves, snatching what they have robbed shedding innocent blood, destroying lives in order to acquire dishonest wealth. And the false prophets who are in the midst of her are like one who builds a wall and daubs it with plain mud without straw. The prophecy, they prophesy falsehood and teach them lies. They say, thus says the Lord God, whereas nothing has been spoken to them from before Yigya. The people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery. They have wronged the poor and needy, and they have oppressed the proselyte, which is not proper. So I sought among them before me, a man possessed of good deeds who would stand in the breach before me and pray for mercy for the people of the land not to suffer destruction. But I found none. So I have poured out my fury upon them. With my punishing fire, I destroyed them. I have brought down upon their heads the punishment for their ways, says Yega Allah. I'm going to bring everything else now into clarity with the seconding of the word of Yah, the seconding of his precept. From chapter 20 of Ezekiel. Therefore, son of Adam, in this case, myself, prophesy to the house of Israel and say to them, thus saith Yigah Allah. In this also your fathers caused anger before me, in that they were perfidious with my member. They were treasonous. They betrayed it. They didn't do as it was instructed. That's what the word perfidious means to enter into a contractual covenanted agreement but not to carry out your portion. When I brought them into the land, which I had sworn by my member to give to them, and they saw every high hill and every thick tree with leaves, and they offered their sacrifices, and they gave their anger-provoking offerings. Let me be clear about this. The law stipulates, if a man sin inadvertently, inadvertently, which means you didn't know better, so you thought you were correct in your actions, but then you find out from the law that it was incorrect, not that you know what you were doing is wrong and you did it anyway. There's a difference. Okay? So it says if a man sin inadvertently, then he can give an offering. But if you know and you have sinned, 
your offering cannot be accepted. It will provoke anger before the Most High and his wrath and judgment because he will not hold the guilty innocent nor will he hold the innocent guilty. He is not a shed of innocent blood. And they gave their anger provoking offerings and they and there they set their sacrificial worship and there they poured out their libations. A libation is a drink offering. Then I said to them, what is this high place to which you are coming where you engage in ecstatic practices? I'm going to read this again. When I brought them into the land, which I had sworn to them by my memory to give to them, and they saw every high hill and every thick tree with leaves, and they offered their sacrifices, and they gave their anger-provoking offerings, and they set their sacrificial worship, and there they poured out their libations. Then I said to them, what is this high place to which you are coming? where you engage in ecstatic practices. So, saying I'm sorry for sins that you know are wrong is an ecstatic practice in the high place. To just talk about repentance with the words, forgive me, and then continuing in your idolatry as if you did not know is an ecstatic practice. Continuing on outside of the law and its governing and its government and its governance is idolatry. It is an ecstatic practice. So it is called a high place to this day. <laughs> So, let's be clear. If you are not doing this Torah in this land, then you are on the high place. In the King James, this is called Eaton on the Mountain. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus saith Yah Allah, Will you defile yourselves in the way of your fathers? And will you go astray after their idols? Now that you know what the idolatry is in turning from this law, and now that you know where your fathers went astray and you're doing what they're doing right now at this moment, will you continue And in offering your gifts, causing your children to pass through the fire, you defile yourselves with all your idol worship to this day. And should I respond to you by my memorial house of Israel? Should the Most High respond to you while you are walking in idolatry right now? Not obeying the law in any way when you know you should is idolatry. As I live, says Yahya Allah, I will not respond to you by my memory as to what you are planning and what arises in your mind before me, it is, it is revealed that you say, let us be like the nations, like the offspring of the countries serving wood and stone. It is already revealed that you want to be just like the countries in which you are held captive. It is already revealed and it will not be so. It will not happen that way. As I live, says Yahya Allah, 
with a mighty hand and with an arm raised up and with outpoured anger will I be king over you. I will bring you out from among the nations and I will gather you in from the countries in which you have been scattered with a mighty hand and with an arm raised up and with outpoured anger and I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations. I want to be clear. He says, I will bring you into the wilderness of those nations you are in. And I will demand an accounting from you there face to face. So, for those of you, wherever you are, the Most High is going to destroy your cities and bring you into the wilderness of those nations and then gather an accounting from you there face to face. You're going to have to give an account for your disobedience. You're going to have to give an account for your actions, for your idolatry, for your choices, for your decisions and your actions. And I will demand an accounting from you there face to face as I demanded an accounting from your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So where you are captive, it's going to demand an accounting from you there. So will I demand an accounting from you, says Yahya Allah. And I will lay upon you the decree of my justice. Be clear. He's very clear. He's going to lay upon you. He's going to force it upon you. The decree of his justice. Which means life, death, blessing, curses, period. That's it. And I will bring you into the covenantal tradition. That's right. There is a tradition which Abraham left. That's a covenanted covenantal tradition. You will enter it, Israel, or you will die. I will separate from you those who have rebelled against and who have dealt falsely with my memory. I will bring them out of the land of their sojourn. I will bring you out of your land of captivity but they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says Yahweh Allah, every one of you, go indulge yourself in your idol worship. But after you have repented, will you not choose to listen to my memory? and profane my holy name no longer with your gifts and your idols. For on my holy mountain, the holy mountain of Israel, says Yahweh Allah, there all the house of Israel, all of them shall worship before me in the land of the living. Be very, he's very clear here. You're not going to heaven. There's no one coming to rescue you. There's no one cracking the sky. And the judgment is upon you, house of Israel, first. And you shall worship before me in the land of the living. Their sacrifices shall be accepted readily. And there I will require your heave offerings and the first of your kneading troughs. Your, the, the bread, the first bread. With all your sacred things, your sacrifice as an acceptable offering shall be readily accepted when I bring you out from among the nations and I gather you in from the countries in which you have been scattered and I will sanctify and I will be sanctified through you in the eyes of the nations. And you shall know that I am Yahweh when I bring you out. 
when I bring you into the land of Israel, to the land which I have sworn by my memory to give to your fathers. There you shall remember your ways and your deeds by which you defiled yourselves. And you shall show great regret when you recognize all the evils which you have committed. And you shall know that I am the Yah when I deal with you for the sake of my name, not according to your evil ways or destructive deeds, O house of Israel, says Yah Allah. That closes out this court session. The king of Israel has spoken. The Most High himself has pronounced judgment on the world about every city and every place and every Israelite in every land. Feel free to share this video to anyone and everyone you feel needs to hear it. If you make it to Israel, I'll see you when you get here. Shalom.